Greetings and welcome to this week's Prime Insight. I'm Gavin Gooden, the Marketing Director here at Blast One. Vacuum blasting as a whole is much slower than open blasting. The mini BRS unit give you up to 20 square feet an hour, while a 3.5 or 6.5 BRS unit may get you up to 40 square feet an hour. It all depends on the complexity of the space. But in this tip we're going to give you four scenarios where vacuum blasting is the ideal choice over open blasting, which we do traditionally. The first one is where vacuum blasting shines is with spot repair, where you're blasting between 1 to 5% of the surface. It's great because there's no setup, no mess, and you can blast the little spots, get in and paint it and get it done very quickly. The second scenario is where vacuum blasting sells is for stripe coatings. It's where you're stripping the coatings for an NDT inspection on the welds. NDT stands for non-destructive testing, which generally refers to critical components such as aircraft landing gear, nuclear reactors or bridge beams that might hold up a bridge. Vacuum blasting is perfect for handling these size restricted and defined areas for blasting. Third scenario for vacuum blasting is when you need to remove corrosion in a very sensitive area. For example, it might be the floor of an engine room on a boat. There's a lot of work to blast that effectively without stripping everything out. With a vacuum blaster, we can do that very efficiently. And finally, the fourth great scenario is in sensitive areas where you need to remove toxic paint. For example, let's say you're hired to remove the toxic paint from an access panel inside the government building. You can take the panels off site to clean and blast, but the frames in that building still need to be handled on site. That's when vacuum blasting has a huge advantage over open blasting and containment. So if you're doing vacuum blasting, here are two more tips you can consider when you're doing that vacuum blasting. The first one, it's very ineffective for one operator to try and manage a bundle of hoses while trying to effectively work that vacuum head. We'd recommend two operators, one holding the vacuum head, one holding the hoses, and the dead man. If the operator is on a boom lift or on a floor, it is possible to go it alone, but the prolonged pressure on the wrist and so on makes it seriously hard to do. It's just physically very tough to execute with a single operator. They slow down because fatigue lowers their productivity. The second tip for vacuum blasting is when you're working on flat work, you do only roughly collect 95 to 99% of the dust and about 90% of the abrasive. This means you always get a trickle of abrasive dropping down. So non-metallic abrasive is best to use in situations because First of all, metallic dust can adversely affect sensitive nearby electronics and metallic abrasive shavings left behind is also bad. So if you're using metallic abrasive, be very conscious that you're leaving a trail behind that's eventually going to rust and possibly compromise that work area. There you have it. Thanks for watching this week's Prime Insight. We'll see you next week.